for me as a scientist, this has come um, just just for the last few years, and and I see more and more people that are working in science uh, becoming exposed to open access. They see the advantages of it. Um, when I when I first travelled when I first travelled to Kenya to work in Africa in 1986. I was 19 years old at the time. The only communication that I had with the Western world was in writing. That was all we had just over two decades ago. If we move on just 10 years from that, in 1996, I was working in, in southern Tanzania. And that was the first time when we struggled really, really hard to send an email from the bush to Dar es Salaam, to the capital, and from there onwards to uh, the UK. And that was miraculous, and we were really, we were really surprised that we could send something like that—a short message, electronically—and that would be almost instantly received at the other side of the world. And now we're again ten years later, and at this moment in time, there is a large number of research institutions south of the Sahara that have almost uh, uh, access for 24/7 and our online um, can search resources, can search databases, and can access journals. That happened to me in 2001 when we installed a big dish when I was working in western Kenya on the shores of Lake Victoria. From one day to the next, suddenly all the students and the, the postdocs and PhDs that were working in the projects had, had full access. And the first confrontation that they had is that they could find all these nice references, but they couldn't actually get to the, the material itself. And we very quickly found out that this was very frustrating because they could get the abstract um, in existing databases, but when they wanted to have the full paper, they were still uh, realizing that they were out of the sticks and, and, and could not um, um, get the full material. So we ended up writing to authors, and, and again, this of course took a very long time before we had the papers. Then open access came along, and since I work in the field of, of malaria, it was actually the launch of the Malaria Journal in early 2002 that transformed uh, the field of malaria research. When Marcel Hommel, the editor of the Malaria Journal in, in 2002, started up this, this uh, journal, um, I think he could hardly realize what he would have in his hands just five years down the line, six years down the line, where now Malaria Journal ranks as the number one uh, journal in the field of, of tropical medicine. That is a, a magnificent uh, accomplishment. It's not just the fact that these articles are all appearing online um, almost instantly after they've been accepted, it's also that suddenly you're becoming exposed to uh, many more different uh, topics from within the big discipline of malaria. Now there are uh, articles on, on drugs that are right next there to articles on, on public health and articles on vet nets for malaria control. And so you get a much broader picture of what's happening in this big field of malaria. That uh, was not possible before when all these articles would end up in very specialist journals. So I would not get to see many in the field of public health or drug development because they would appear somewhere else. With, with, with the open access and the way that Biomed Central has set up the Malaria Journal, that has been a, a, a dramatic improvement and makes people aware of what's going on and, and get the bigger picture.